Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we will be building this really nice interactive slider using just Figma. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So we're in Figma right now and the first thing that you'll need is a bunch of image assets. Now I'm using sneaker images as example but you're free to pick any image that you want, it'll work the same way. And I have three images of Nike Air Force Ones here. Now the next thing that I need to do is to remove the background, the white background that we have from these images. So what I'll do is I'll select my, and I've explained this in my older videos as well. I'll select my image and I'll right click and I'll go to my plugins tab and I'll select remove BG. So this plugin will remove the background uh, from this image and it'll give us a nice crisp uh, transparent image with just the product. So if you see now it has removed the automatically the white background and now we have a really nice clean image of the sneaker. So you have to do the same thing for the rest of images as well. Let's quickly do that. So our three clean images are ready. Now the next thing that we need to do is to pick an artboard. So I'm going to build this prototype for a web web page so i'll be picking a web artboard so what i'll do is i'll hit a on my keyboard and i'll go into the desktop presets and i'll pick macbook pro 14. now we have the desktop layout and we have the images ready now the th next thing that we need to do is um, if you see what i'll do is i'll just quickly select my artboard and since we have three images i'll just quickly duplicate the artboard again and the reason i want to duplicate it because i want to create three equal sets okay so here's a small trick so I'll just duplicate the artboard here, main artboard. And what I'll do is I'll go to this um, inspector panel here. And if you see width, right, make sure that this is open. Uh, it's not closed, kind of proportions are not constrained. Come to this width panel. And here what you have to do, you have to do some maths equation here and it'll automatically do it. It's a very simple one. So just divide by three, just add a slash and three and it'll automatically divide the width by three. So if you see, I'll get exactly the one third of the image and uh, one third of the size without doing much right so now i have the one third frame here which i'll be using to put up this sneaker okay so that's a small trick i just got a frame with the exact one third size and in this what we want to do is we want to pull up this first sneaker image and i'll add it to this group now if you see the image is slightly bigger so what i want to do is i want to scale down this image so i'll hit k on my keyboard and you can do it manually if you want to scale it or you can also use this scale proportion tab to reduce it automatically so let's do that and i just want to reduce it to let's say half of its size something like this so i'll just hit 0.5x here in the scale option it'll automatically do it for me so that's a very nice and easy trick that figma has now integrated in figma directly right so now we have our image ready uh, the next thing is i want to add some background here so what I'll do is I'll pick the background from this um, image itself. So let's quickly do that. So currently the background of this big frame is um, white. I'm going to pick something from here and let's say let's pick this yellow. Okay, so it's slightly mustard. So I'm just going to pick this color. Now the next thing that you need to do is you need to add a text behind this uh, sneaker image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit T on my keyboard and I'm going to add a text and you want this text to be slightly bigger so what you have to do is just go to that extra bold option um, I'm going to use white okay and you can pick any color you want basically and I'm just picking up white for now and let's make it a little bit bigger something like a 54 size like this maybe a little bit bigger yeah this looks nice and what you have to do is just rearrange from here in the layers panel and if you see now the text is behind um, the image okay and the next thing that you need to do is you need to rotate the image a little bit so that it looks really good so i'm just going to give an angle of 50 degrees here and if you see um this looks quite nice so you have the air force one written in the background and you have the image slightly rotated okay and one more thing that you need to do is you need to add a little bit of a, I'm just going to move it in the center first. And the next thing that you need to do is just to add a little bit of a shadow so that it looks floating. Okay, so let's add an effect here, drop shadow and 25 will give it a really high blur sort of a, so you can give 25 blur as well. 
So it adds a nice diffuse shadow behind this image and this looks floating and it looks absolutely nice actually, right? So this is the first frame that we have done. So now we have to do the same treatment for the rest of the two images, exactly same um, thing, but with different colors. So let's quickly do that. I'll just duplicate this and I'll just change images, text and the background and we'll back in a Jiffy. So our three frames are ready with the images, text and the background. Now what we have to do is we have to just have to put all of these three frames into our main bigger frame, the MacBook Artboard frame. So what I'll do is just pick this up and drag it, okay, and align it into the extreme left. So this is how it looks like. Similarly for the second one. And similarly for the third one. So now we have all the three images in place. One more thing, a slight touch that we need to do is we need to add a nav bar here. So it's a simple nav bar that I've built. Uh, just say sneaks and some categories of sneakers and that's it. And what we have to do is we have to just do fixed position wise while scrolling. So that's fixed here. And if you want, you can also lock it so that you accidentally don't change it. So our images and the artboard is ready. The next thing that we need to do is create the different interaction states. So what I need to do first is I'll duplicate the artboard here. So I'll select the entire artboard and I'll duplicate it. And to duplicate the command will be option. While dragging, you just hold option on your keyboard for Mac users and automatically duplicate it. Uh, the similar key would be alt for Windows users. So while dragging, just hit alt and it'll automatically duplicate the artboard for you. And the next thing that you need to do is, so while hovering on this, let's say when I hover on the first card, the first card should expand and take, let's say up to two third of this entire width. And these two other uh, images should squish down to um, uh, this smaller size, okay? So the first thing that we need to do is make, when I hover on the first one, the first one, the first card should expand, okay? So let's quickly do that. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just quickly move the frame one above in the layers panel so then you can see the changes, okay? So what I'll do is I'll just select come here and once you get this arrow, double headed arrow, hit command on your keyboard and just drag it. So this will resize the bounds of the frame without actually scaling the content. Okay. So hit command on your keyboard while resizing. Okay. And uh, just move this in the center. Even the image should be in the center. And we want this card to expand even the images and the text should also expand. That's what we want. So what I'll do here now is I'll first of all um, give it something like a smaller angle so that there's also a rotation so that you can see this change as well. So I'll give it 20 um, degree rotation. So it'll rotate back a little from 50 to 20. So here we have 50 and it'll rotate back to 20. Okay. And then I'll hit K on my keyboard. Okay. And here we'll resize, uh, rescale actually, we'll rescale this uh, entire uh, shoe image sneaker image. So what I'll do is I'll hit something around 1.2. You can just play around with these values. So 1.2 looks a little smaller. What I'll do is let's say do 2x. 2x looks so big. So I think 1.5 should be good enough. So let's do 1.5. Ah, perfect. So 1.5 looks absolutely amazing. I'll just center the entire thing. So now it's in the center. Probably I'd move it a little bit on the left. Okay. And the background um, image the background text that we have you have to do the same thing there you can go a little higher on the scaling here I guess because it's still the text and it's not that big so I did scaling for the text as 2x and for the image if we did 1.5x okay and now this is what we have so once we click on this this should expand and the rest the other should um, what do you say it should squish down to a smaller size so let's do that as well so I want this entire space to be taken by two cards, these two cards, the other two cards. So what I'll do is I'll do the same trick here. I'll come here and I'll hit divide by two. So width divide by two and it'll small, I mean, it'll reduce the width of this, uh, divide the width of this entire card. Okay. 
so i'll move it in the end because this card location is in the end and i'll also pick the second frame which is here hidden behind and i'll also do the same treatment here i'll just divide it by 2 okay and i'll move it here perfect now if you see these images are getting trimmed down because you're not able to see outside of the frame so what you have to do is you have to just resize them a little bit so what i'll do here is i'll first of all select the image in the second group okay and you have to reduce the size a bit so that will give us a really dramatic effect so i'll hit key again on my keyboard and i'll reduce it to 0.5 this looks perfect and similarly with the background image uh, first of all reduce it i'll hit k on my keyboard again and i'll reduce it to again i think 0.3 maybe i think that will be fine i'll just align it in the center when this is squished we don't want to see the text so that's something is like a personal uh, choice for me because i don't think it will be readable much so what i'll do is i'll just come here and give it a pass through of zero so for these two cards we don't want to see text and the image of the image size also reduces so i have to do the same trick here on this one as well so let's quickly do that so i hope you understood the entire interaction so when i click on any of the image that particular image should expand the text and the um, sneaker image should expand and it should also rotate a little bit whereas the other two images uh, should squish down to this smaller size and the text behind them goes away i mean that's not visible in the state so that's how the interaction is so let's quickly do this for other states as well so we want to have a state where we hover on this center image that should also expand and the similarly for the uh, last image so let's quickly do that So now we are done with all of our stages. So if you see the first one is the resting stage where you have all the three and equal sizes. Then the first one where you hover over the first one and the first one expands, second one, second one expands and the third one, third one expands. Okay. So now we have all the stages set up. So the first thing that we need to do is when I hover on this first image, I should be able to uh, first frame actually, if I hover anywhere in this first frame, I should be able to come to the second stage. So I'll just come here and select the second stage. So instead of on click, you want while hovering. Okay. And smart animate gentle 600 milliseconds. If you want bouncy and all, you can also do that from here. Just play with it and you will get a different idea around it. And instead of 600, maybe I'll do 500 like a standard size. Okay. Similarly for the second one, I'll select the second tab and I'll link it to the second output. This one where the second one is expanded. Again, same while hovering again, everything is same gentle 500. Select the third one, link it to the third artboard. Instead of on click while hovering, same. Okay. Now the next thing from here is the so first one is done. The next thing that you need to do is select go in the second tab. Now while hover here, while being here, if you hover on these two, you should be able to come to their states as well. Right. So I'll select these smaller one here. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll drag it to the respective expanded state. Okay. And it'll come here. Instead of on click, you want while hovering. MacBook gentle 500 milliseconds. Perfect. And when I come here, smaller one, clicking on this should take me to its expanded state. So you have to just link everything to its corresponding expanded state. While hovering. Okay. Similarly, if I come here, I should be able to go to its expanded state, which is this, and this one, I should be able to go to this one. Okay. And the last frame from here, I should be able to go to the first one. Okay. From here, I should be able to go to the previous one. Okay. Perfect. So if I show you the entire thing, it looks a little bit messy, but it's very simple. Just link the same um, element to its corresponding expanded state. Okay. And now we have done everything. Now let's quickly see how this looks like. Nice. 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 
And you also get a little bit of a bounce here. If you see, when you click on the expanded states, you get a really nice bounce. And between states also, this is working perfectly fine. So this looks absolutely amazing. And once you hover all of them out, then you get to the resting state. So this is this looks absolutely gorgeous. And also let me know if you try this out. Tag me in your prototypes and I'll be taking a look. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.